Okay, here is our question. As an automatic flag raising system for a, a horizontal flagpole attached to the vertical outside wall of a tall building and it's stuck. Management want to send some brave person out to fix it. You have to work out is this safe. So as always, let's start with the diagram. So we have the wall. We have a hinge. We have the flagpole attached to the hinge. And we have a cable running upwards from the end to the wall at an angle. Let's call it theta, which is 30 degrees. We know the length here, which is 3 meters. We know that the flagpole weighs 60 kilograms. So we'll give it a mass at the center. That'll be M1, or 60 kilograms. And we have been told that the most dangerous cases are when the mechanic is at the far end of the flagpole. So we've got a mechanic here, clinging on for dear life, with a mass of it's called M2 of 80 kilograms. What we want to know is the forces here and here, and we want forces to be less than 2,500 newtons, otherwise something is going to break. Okay, so what principle will we use here? This is a statics problem. You want nothing to move. So as you want nothing to move, that means that the torques must balance, that's the angular momentum principle, and the forces must balance, the force momentum principle. So those are the two principles we'll need to use. First step for most problems like this is to draw a free body diagram. In this case, an extended free body diagram showing the object in question, in this case the beam, and all the forces that act on the beam. Okay, so here's the beam. What forces are acting on it? Well, there's going to be a gravity from its own weight, which will be m1g. That will be the gravitational force of the workman, m2g. How about the cable? The cable will apply a force. You can think of it like a spring. That's really not very stretchy. So the cable will apply a tension force. Let's call it T here, at angle theta. We don't know how big that force is. That's one thing we have to work out. And then at the hinge, are there going to be forces? Well, a hinge can apply force in any direction. It can't apply a torque if it's a nice flexible hinge, but it can certainly apply a force in any direction. So we don't really know what direction the force is going to be there. I might break it up into two components. Let's have a vertical component we'll call V, and a horizontal component we'll call H. V or H could be negative, so that allows the point in any direction at all. So there we have our extended free body diagram. What do we do with it? Well, let's use the momentum principle first. Because this beam is not accelerating, you hope, you don't want it to break, all the forces must be in balance. So let's try vertical. Vertical force balance. So upward force, which is V plus, hmm, we have to break T the tension up into components. So we've got a component here and a component there. So this vertical component is equal to T sine theta because it's the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's the vertical. Um, that must equal the downward force, which is m1 plus m2g. And horizontally, um, the only horizontal forces are this one here and that component there. So we have h must equal T cos theta. This time it's cos because it's adjacent over hypotenuse.
Okay, now let's try and work out the torques. Um, the force equations, we had two equations, vertical and horizontal, but they were um, had three unknowns. We, do, we don't know the tension, we don't know the vertical or the horizontal components there. So we're going to need one more equation. Let's use torques for this. We don't want this flagpole to be rotating. We don't want it to be rotating about any axis at all, so it doesn't matter which axis we can pick. Um, rather arbitrarily, I'll pick the hinge as an axis. That at least means that V and H will cancel out. So what's the torque here? Well, that distance is L over 2. This distance is L. So the torque clockwise is L over 2M1G plus L M two G. How about the torque the other way, anticlockwise? That comes from this tension, and we have to get the perpendicular distance, which is this distance here. As this angle is theta, that's length here. Call it R. Um, sine theta equals R over L. So R equals L sine theta. So that means that the anticlockwise torque is going to be L sine theta t. So now let's solve that. Um, we only have one thing we don't know in this equation, t. So just from that equation we can get that t, well first of all the L's cancel out. Makes things pretty easy. So we get T equals G M1 over 2 plus M2 all over sine theta. Does that look plausible? Well, we can check the units. Um, this is a tension, so it's a force, and F equals mass times acceleration. So you've got acceleration times the mass. So that all works out. How about the functional form? If G is stronger, then the tension is bigger, which makes sense. If the masses are bigger, that makes the tension more. Mass 2, which is the person, is more important than mass 1, which also makes sense because he's at the end of the flagpole. And sine theta at the bottom means if theta equals 0, if the rope was very slow like that, the tension would be absolutely enormous, which kind of makes sense. So all checks for plausibility there. Okay, so here are our three equations we've worked out. If we, that's one we've just worked out from the torques. The only unknown is T, so we can solve that and we end up with a tension of 2156 newtons. That's less than two and a half thousand, which means that the tension is not going to be too severe. Um, the tension won't pull the bolt out of the wall. So that's good, but what about the forces at the hinge? From the horizontal balance of forces, we worked out that the H equals T cos theta, and we know T from here. So that gives us a value of 1867 newtons, which is also okay. How about the vertical component? We have the vertical force equation. Um, and we can work all this out because we know the two masses, g and that. So if we take this over that side of the equation, we end up with v equals 438 newtons. So if we have a horizontal component and a vertical component, the total magnitude of the force is going to be that. So we use Pythagoras, so the magnitude of the force is going to be root v squared plus h squared. Pythagoras' theorem, you have v and h. You want to work out this length here. It's just the squared plus the squared square root thereof, which comes out as 1917 newtons, which is also less than 2,500. So it looks like this particular operation is safe. You can give it the go-ahead. Let's just check the plausibility of the numbers. 
um, the thing that forces here, 2,000 newtons, and that's the force you'd get from 200 kilograms, um, which is not too far off the weight around here, after you allow for angles and things, so it sounds plausible. If it was 20,000 newtons or 200 newtons, it would clearly be silly, but something of order of a few thousand looks at least vaguely plausible. So I think uh, that doesn't actually mean it's true, but it's past the plausibility test.